Hey guys and girls, just another boring fuel economy video. Bit of information that might be interesting for uh, people that have 120 Prados or that are interested in buying 120 Prados. So I'm gonna give you a few little factors here. We've filled this vehicle up, I don't know, about four or five days ago. At, I'll tell you where, at the Mobile on the Western Highway at Balan. You can see the fuel gauge is just above the quarter line and that's 1300 k's that's driving over to robe that's beach driving two days and then driving back again to melbourne a little bit of run around not much and this is the next day that's a genuine uh, approximate 1300 k's let's so one thing is going to show you how many liters fits in the tank when you've got down to that point there because you think you're getting pretty low on fuel and also what fuel economy you should be getting with a mod this is our 120 with a fairly modified four-wheel drive. Let's fill it up and let's fill it up and see what it looks like anyway. See what we get. Okay, so here we are at the Caltex, getting our four centre liter off on the using the Toyota app. For anybody that doesn't know about that, you just have the Toyota app and you get four centre liter off at any Caltex. But be warned, generally they've got at least four, five, six, seven, eight, or twenty centre liter more. They're dearer than all the other servos generally. So there you go. The 120, as we said before, off-road tyres, heavy-duty side steps, awning. We've got the roller, Titan roof rack up there. Um, storage system in the back you know about. So we're just going to fill it up and see how many litres it takes. And uh, so there'll be a few things you'll be able to learn from this little video. You wish your car filled up that fast every time. Two clicks is generally enough, unless you want to squeeze a few more liters in if you're in the outback and you're about to burn it up in the next 10 minutes and range is an issue and you want every last drop, like a desert crossing or something, then you're going to keep clicking and uh, you can even lift the nozzle out a little bit and top it up a bit extra. Another important thing to do when you come back from a trip is give the vehicle a wash, pop this open and give it a wash out as well and when you take the cap off you can carefully wipe the rim of the filler to make sure the dirt ends up out of the tank not in the tank right? Okay now let's do some calculations this is going to be a small education for some people I know a lot of people already know and there's different ways to do things here and I'm going to make some mistakes but trying to keep it simple remember so what do we need to remember? 1305 k's just to make it simple, we'll call it 1300 k's. Give or take a few k's, give or take half a litre, doesn't matter, right? So here on the fuel, we did a few extra clicks. We're going to call it 145 litres. See the circled at the top there? 144.861. That's 150, right? Now, the first little tip is, see here it says guest Toyota, guest reward, right? Guest reward. I like to call you a guest at guest. I mean at Toyota. Yeah, it's not guest, is it, right? The guest thing, whatever. Now... Like I said, you may as well have the app on the phone because if you happen to have to use a, a Caltex and they do it, it's a free four cents, which in this case is a free $5.80, right? So whatever, okay? But don't get sucked in. This is part of the message. Don't get sucked into going, oh, I've got the Toyota app, Up to, off to the nearest Caltex because you might find a independently owned quality branded servo down the road or somewhere. There's a bit of a price war between whatever servos and you can save 10 or 15 or 20 cents a litre, or if at the right time of the cycle, 30 or 40 cents a litre you can save by using Petrol Spy and checking where the cheapest fuel is for your vehicle, right? So, back to the cap. So, that's there's a few tips in this video. Back to the calculations, right? So, if we go 1300 divided by, we used 145 litres, that tells us that. Uh, we got 8.96, um, 8.9, again close enough to 9, 9 kilometres for every litre. It's pretty good. It's not bad when you think about a Prado, 2.8, 2.9 tonne, uh, travelling at, you know, speed limit, a lot of it was 110, it's like a brick into the wind resistance, uh, not towing, just two people, gear for two people, four driving gear. Fridges, usual stuff, storage system, bull bars, you know, UHFs, light bars, bash plates, all the heavier extra weight. You know, just under three ton type trip. 
um, at 110 a lot of that and the rest of it on soft sand so bloody you're not going to complain about that are you anyway so the other way to do it is you can do 145 litres divided by 1300 k the other way around and that'll tell you how many well after the decimal point how many litres per 100 k's right so forget the decimal point there just move it forward we're doing a bit of mathematics here right now we all we went to school some of us did math some we didn't and I'll tell you, you know, I could learn something and be quite good at anything. But the problem you've got in life is, unless you use those skills, you forget them, right? So they're easy to forget, but the important ones like this are the ones you want to remember. And if you didn't, well, it's as simple as that. I've just shown you in this video, you can watch it again. So the genuine. So if you're ever going to, don't come to me in a text message with, oh, I'm getting this fuel economy, is that right or not? Because there's so many variables. I can't tell you if that's right or not. The first thing you need to do to know your fuel economy is not look at your trip computer. You need to do this, you need to fill up. And if you want to be really accurate, you've got to fill up on the same servo, at the same pump, on the same ground level. I've explained it before in other videos, the size, the length of the tanks in these Prados, and any car for that matter, especially the Prado, it can vary by quite a few litres, you know. If you've got a down forward facing front downhill, or the back downhill, the difference could be eight, nine, ten litres difference, right? Believe it or not. Um, so 11.1 litres per 100 k's we got. How awesome is that, right? So that's a 120 Prado that's 12 years old with all the usual modifications and, you know, people can, you know, whatever, new motors, old motors, 100,000 k's, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, I can tell you, they stay in good condition, right? Uh, so people can get about the same. So that's a little bit about the fuel calculation. So we got 11.1 litres per 100 k's. So then you can also go, okay, how many kilometres, so distance to empty in your 120, you don't know? Okay, so we know we you need 11.1. So let's do this. Let's go. Let's make sure we've got 12 litres available per 100 k's, right? So then you can go 180 litre tank divided by 12 is going to tell you you can do, well, it's not 15, it's 15 of those, right? So it's 1,500 k's if you're getting 12 litres per 100 k's, but then you're bone dry, right? But just take that into account now if you can get 10 it's pretty simple calculations if you're getting 10 litres per 100 k's and you've got a 150 litre tank well 150 litres divided by 10 is again the same thing right because you're getting 10 litres per 100 k's now if you're getting pretty bad economy and you've got a 120 and you load it up real heavy and it's in pretty bad condition you've got a 180 litre tank divided by 15 litres per 100 k's you're still going to get 1200 k's right I could probably do it another way and give you the full figure, but hopefully you get where I'm headed. You can work it out in your head anyway, but the main thing I wanted to show you as well is, it's a 180 litre tank, subtract the 145 we put in, leaves us 35. So 35 divided by the 11.1 litres per 100 k's tells us, we've got to add a couple zeros, but we had 315 k's left, okay? 315 k's left on that, we had 35 litres right so we would have done we could have done another 300 k's which would meant we would have done 1300 remember rounded plus 300 equals so with a bit of highway driving at speed and a bit of sand dune driving we can do 1600 k's in our 120 pretty good now if we didn't have a bull bar and if we didn't have roof racks and off-road tires heavy duty side steps and all this heavy gear the fuel economy gets a lot better. It gets around 8 litres per 100 k's on these cars, right? It doesn't matter if it's a 120, a 150. 120 is going to be a little bit more economical, both compared stock to stock, because they're smaller. They're narrower, they're lower, they're lighter. Of course, it's going to use a little bit less fuel. Same engine. And even later on with the newer engine, even though it's smaller, it's got to work harder to make the same output. So comparing same same they get about the same economy there's not a big difference in the in the engines the 1kd ftv and the 1gd ftv not a big difference other than the 1gd hasn't got the torque it hasn't got the power under the right foot seat of the pants tells you it hasn't got what the one the the one kd's got but this is not about that's about fuel economy anyway i think i've said enough the idea was to give you an idea a few things okay you've got your fuel app there you might as well have that there to take a discount for free when it's available but use petrol spy make sure your caltex or one that you're traveling to past or nearby is competitively priced before otherwise you're not really saving four cents that's the first tip um, that's what you should be able to get fuel economy wise 
I'll call that in absolute peak condition. Now you'll get better if you've got less accessories, you'll get worse if you've got more accessories, and if you drive faster or more aggressively, uh, then you'll use more fuel. But the 120 typically gets us around about 11 and a half litres per case because there's usually quite a bit of off-road mixed into that. It's quite a large tank of fuel. You've got to get places and back and whatever. So let's say the average tank's probably 20 or 30% off-roading out of the 100, you know, out of the 1,000k fill. You know, there's probably two or 300 that's off-road, whether it's tracks, dirt and dust. Anyway, guys, hopefully this has helped you somewhat with some fuel calculations so you can work out the way to do it. You fill up your tank, you reset your trip meter. Trip A is the ideal one. Use trip B to measure your, if you want to actually measure a trip distance, which nobody does, but if you do, use trip B. Use trip A for your fuel, okay? In the later vehicles with trip computers, they have a reset automatically. Part of the trip computer calculates that for you. But in the older cars, that's what you do. Reset trip A, fill it up. Drive when you've done a thousand Ks, whatever you like. Uh, refill it, take note of the liters and the odometer reading. Use these calculations here. So this may be uh, you know, a video that you might want to save. Um, anyway, it's a butter bing, butter boom. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of it. Please, if you haven't already, for your own good, subscribe so you don't miss the next important bit of info. Last little tip before I go, we've got another YouTube channel. You want to be on both our YouTube channels because a lot of the more touring information, depending whether it's touring or mechanical, what channel it ends up on, you want to be on both of these YouTube channels, okay? You want to be subscribed on both of those. And the other thing is, because people have asked, if you want to contact me, I only work school days, school hours, right? So the Prada Hospital is closed if it's not a school day. Sometimes it's closed other times anyway because there's this thing called long service leave. I've mentioned before, during COVID, we work seven days a week packing parts. Now we're making up for it, taking time off. We're going out doing trips here and there because we can. That's the other thing we do. If you want to see those, another reason to subscribe on Full Before Touring Australia. There's going to be a lot of information for you there. Very vehicle related a lot of the time also. Best times to contact me is Monday morning from 9am, even 8.30, 8, 8.30 with a text message. Text message is the only way to contact me, okay? There's no, I don't use Messenger, okay? If you want to stay up to date with the, the best time to contact me and what's happening is, we've got our, that's why we've got these groups, Facebook page, look at the top there, these Facebook pages. The Prada Hospital, that's to do with service, repairs, that sort of thing, you know? Parts, you want to be on liking the Protoholics 1K to FTV injectors page, right? So one's the parts side of the business, the parts kits, the injector kits, the big front engine kits. The way to purchase them is you text me, you say, hey, Anth, I would like to get whatever it is, leave your name, leave your vehicle details, I'll send you a link to a video. Sorry if I don't have a big long conversation with you like I am now, because I'm very busy. That's why I'm giving the information now. G'day, hi, how you going? Hope you had a great day, great week. Really wish you all the best, but I've got hundreds and thousands of people I'm communicating with. Unfortunately, I haven't always got time. I'd love to sometimes. Sometimes we do. And those people that know sometimes, you get the big conversation happening. Well, every now and then you might get lucky or unlucky. Depends how you look at it. Uh, but quite often, I'm just pumping through the messages, trying to get it done. I give you the link to the video. You watch the video, you come back and say, yep, that's good, I want that. I'll send you the message. That's how to pay for it. There's the details. You pay for it. Send me a screenshot. I pack it, we send it. Bada bing, bada boom, job done. This video is long enough, I'm out of here. Catch ya, thanks for watching. See ya. Subscribe, bell on, like button, all that stuff. See ya.